Let's pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless your name for this glorious day, the day of your power. Thank you, Lord, because you have kept us alive to see this day, the day of miracle, the day of your manifestation, the day of the supernatural. And it's the day when heavens will open up upon every heart, every life in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, that those who are weak will be strong. Those who are poor, you make them prosperous. And those who have been defeated in life, give everyone dominion in Jesus' name. Wipe away whatever had happened in yesteryears. And give us a bright future as we follow on in the name of the Lord in Jesus' name. Once again, Lord, open our eyes to see. And when we see the path you go, we'll walk therein. I will never go back in Jesus' name. We bless your name because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you very much. We can sit down. As you look at Daniel chapter 3, we find the hour of suffering. And the hour of persecution. And the hour of the tyrant. Wanting to oppress. Wanting to destroy the people of God. But in that hour of suffering. The power of the supernatural. Came to be manifested on behalf of the people of God. And because there is a. God who changes not. And because we have the Christ who is the same yesterday and today and forever. That's the reason we know when our hour comes, there will be power for our hour. Give me a good amen. amen. Daniel chapter 3 verse 15. Now, if ye be ready, that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the image that I have made. Well, but if ye worship not, ye shall be cast the same hour. That's the hour. The hour of threatening. The hour of the tyrant. And the hour of this domineering personality. Intimidating, frightening, terrifying. The people of God and saying, when the time comes and you see the signal, if you fall down and fall in line and do what I, the king of Babylon, what I, the tyrant of the land, what I, the destroyer of human progress and human life, what I decree, if you fall down, forget about God and forget about conviction and forget about your hope in the Lord. Listen to me. I'm the one in charge. You fall down and worship what I tell you to worship. That will be all right. But if you refuse, that same hour, you'll be cast in the midst of a burning, fairy furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? What an hour. It's an hour challenge. What an hour. It's an hour when the test comes upon your life, whether you have the power for the hour or not. Thank God for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And I thank God for you. I said, I thank God for you. You will not bow. You will not bend. 
You'll not give up your face at the time when it matters to stand. I was told in verse 16, Shedrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, they looked him straight in the face, eyeball to eyeball. And he said, O Nebuchadnezzar, they even called him by his name directly. We are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, those people had the power for the hour. And I want to tell you, you have the power for the hour. And it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter what Nebuchadnezzar is threatening. It doesn't matter. What well, the people who think that your life is in their hand, it doesn't matter. What well, the people who think that your destiny and the direction of your life, your decisions, whether you are happy or you are not happy, and whether you succeed or you don't succeed, they say, it's not the brain you have, it's not the plan you have, it's in our hands. That's what Nebuchadnezzar was saying. He says, I don't care for your conviction. I don't care for the doctrine you believe. I don't care for the faith you think you have. Your destiny is in my hand. And he said, Nebuchadnezzar, you'll see the person that has the power is not the one that brags. And it's not the one that says, this is what I will do. They said, if it be so, our God. God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning, fairy furnace, and he will. Think about that. He said, here is the proposal, and here is the confidence we have in the Lord. He is able. Your God is able. The one who opened the Red Sea is still there. He is able. And the one that made the Jericho walls to fall down. He is still there the same, never changing. He is able. And the one that destroyed 185,000 of the army of Sennacherib at the time of the people of God is there. He is able. And the one that opened blind eyes. And the one that made Jesus our Lord and Savior to rise from the dead. And the one that manifested power, unlimited power, immeasurable power. Even to raise Jesus from the dead after rolling away the stone. He's still there. Our God is able. Able to deliver us from the bony fairy furnace. And he will deliver us. Out of thine hand, O king. Let's see now the power for that hour. We're looking at verse 27. And the princes and the governors and the captains and the kings, counselors, being gathered together, saw these men. That's after they cast them into the fire. They called them out. They went in just to fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And then after some time, they came out of the fire. This day you are coming out of the fire. Because there is power for your hour. And then it says, they saw these men upon whose bodies the fire had no power. The fire had no power. The fury had no power. The machinations and maneuvering of the enemy will not have any power upon your life. Nor was an air of their head sink. Neither was their, was their coats changed. Nor the smell of fire passed on them. That's the power for the hour. We're talking about the power to turn bondage to breakthrough. I thought you'll say amen. amen. Yesterday's bondage will turn to today's breakthrough. The power, the supernatural power that turns bondage 
into breakthrough. And it will happen today. To you, for you, it will happen in Jesus' name. I'm looking at Psalm 116. Psalm 116. From verse 16. O oh Lord, truly, I am thy servant. I am thy servant. He repeats that again. And the son of the handmaid, thou hast loosed my bonds. Your life, anything that enemy tied up, there is a loosing taking place in Jesus' name. I will offer to thee the sacrifice of thanksgiving. And I will call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows unto the Lord now in the presence of all his people. Then it says in verse 19, In the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of thee, O Jerusalem, praise ye the Lord. He lose your body. He'll take the body away. It will destroy the works of the devil in your life in Jesus' name. Jeremiah chapter 30, I'm reading from verse 8. Jeremiah chapter 30. We're looking at verse 8. For it shall come to pass in that day, says the Lord of hosts, that I will break his yoke from off thy neck. The yoke is broken. The burden is removed. The bondage is turned unto breakthrough. And I will burst thy bonds. And strangers shall no more serve themselves of him. People you don't know, tormenting your life, those days are gone. The people you don't know, you went to school, you didn't know them. You got your job, you didn't know them. When you were sweating, to be able to get qualified, they, they were nowhere to be found. Now you sweated and you've got the job. Now you sweated and you've got the wife. Now you have sweated and got the husband. Now you sweated and built a house. Now you have sweated. And after sweating and sweating and sweating, burning the midnight candle, now you got the reward, the promise of what God said, I will give to the faithful. And then a stranger that didn't know when you were struggling and sweating and reading and studying and praying and fasting and waiting upon the Lord, the stranger just showed up and he said, hey, Wait on. Come on here. Success does not depend on praying, fasting, struggling, studying, and doing whatever. Success depends on me, the stranger. If I say you will not succeed, you will not succeed. If I say you'll not be happy, you'll not be happy. God forbid. I said God forbid. You will trample on all those strangers in Jesus' name. Think about a man that all his life, all that he got, he put it into what he wants to do in life. And then somebody, after you have labored for so long, for many years, somebody one night appeared in the dream, and, he's, and you don't even know this fellow. This is a stranger. And he says, I'm telling you that. You know, we are here, and since we are here, you'll never make it. And I say, get out of that place. I say, get out of that place. They meet you in the dream, we conquer them. My prayers for you will conquer them. The promise of Jesus will conquer them. The power of the Holy Ghost in this day of his power will conquer them in Jesus' name. And I want to tell you, don't live your life on dreams. Don't you live your life on the threats of a stranger, somebody you don't know. Don't you know Jesus? Don't you know God? Don't you know the Holy Ghost? Don't you know the promise of your father? And then a stranger comes 
And he says, your destiny depends on me. I command those strangers to vanish away right now in Jesus' name. Look at that verse 8 again. He tells us in verse 8, for it shall come to pass. In that day, says the Lord of hosts, that I will break his yoke from up thy neck and will burst thy bounds and strangers shall no more serve themselves of him but they shall serve the Lord their God and David their king whom I will raise up unto them therefore fear thou not O my servant Jacob says the Lord Neither be dismayed, O Israel, for lo, I will save thee from afar, and thy seed from the land of their captivity. And Jacob shall return, and shall be in rest, and be quiet, and none shall make him afraid. Give me a good amen there. In verse 17, for I will restore. Everybody say restoration. Your day of restoration has come in Jesus' name. For I will restore health unto thee. And I will heal thee of thy wounds, says the Lord, because they called thee an outcast, saying, This is Zion whom no man seeketh after. But things are changing. I said things are changing. And they are changed forever, completely, permanently in Jesus' name. The power to turn bondage to breakthrough. Three points we are doing, Kutsundrida, before we break all those yokes. Before we destroy all those things, the works of the devil away from your life. From today, you'll never be the same again. Point number one, different forms of bondage. Different forms of bondage. Point number two, definite freedom from bondage. Definite freedom from bondage. Number three, dynamic faith for breakthrough. Dynamic faith for breakthrough. Number one, different forms of bondage. You need to know the problem before you see the solution. You need to understand the bondage before you enjoy, experience the breakthrough. Different forms of bondage. Psalm 107 verse 10. Psalm 107 verse 10. Such a sage in darkness. And in the shadow of death, being bound in affliction and iron. That's a kind of bondage. They try to move forward. There is a chain of iron on their legs. They try to make progress. There is a kind of bondage of iron that is tying them down, holding them back. And they try to have the good things supply. And they say, so and so got it, I can get it too. So and so made it, I can make it too. And the devil said, where? While he's there. And then he ties them down with great bondage. The brain is good, but the body is sick. The mind is sharp. But then the brain is tormented. The life has a great prospect. In front of it, a great future. But then hindrances and disturbances and distractions tie them down. And it says this, such a seat in darkness. Eventually, they just sit down there in darkness. And they say, there's no use trying. There's no use trying to make it. They will not allow me. Who are the day? God allows you. Jesus allows you. 
the promises of God allow you. And then I'm here and I release you. I allow you to go and succeed. Go and do well. Because the word of the Lord, the declaration of the man of God is greater than that of Pharaoh, greater than that of Herod, and greater than that of Nebuchadnezzar. I release you, go and fulfill the will of God in your life in Jesus' name. But you know, they just sat down there in darkness and the siege and the shadow of death. They see that death is near. And the shadow of death is hovering over them. And they, they're helpless. Their minds are paralyzed. They will tied up. And their mind, they cannot even see fresh again and move on. And because of that, they're tied down in that affliction and iron. But this is the hour for your hour. I said this is the hour for your hour. Let's look at Romans chapter 7. See another kind of bondage. Romans chapter 7. I'm reading from verse 14. Romans 7 verse 14. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal and sold under sin. The, the very first thing that ties a man is his confession. The very first thing that makes a man not to be able to move out and move forward is his own confession. I am. I am carnal. What do you expect of me? I am carnal. Our family had that peculiar problem. We always fail when it comes to this age. What do you expect of me? I am carnal. What do you expect of me? I'm just, you know, so and so. You know the tribe I come from? Nobody in our tribe ever does well, but you will do well. You can be the one that breaks that kind of thing. You can be the one that says, I'm going to open the way. Open the way for our tribe. Open the way for our family. And if your family has never been any different, you are the one to open the way. Put the key in your hand, open that door. And move on in Jesus' name. What binds a man? What destroys a man? What keeps a man back? It's his confession. Look at verse, look at verse 14 again. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I'm different from the law. I am carnal. I'm sold on the sin. And for that which I do, I allow not. That's his confession. What I do, I want to do well. I want to move up. I want to do better, but I'm helpless. That's your confession. Change that confession. I said change that confession. You know, there are people, they only look at, you know what happened last year now? You know what happened years before? You know what happened 10 years ago? You know what happened to the firstborn in our family? You know what happened to the second one and the third one? And now it is my turn. It is not my turn. I said it is not my turn. If you are talking about something spectacular, now it is my turn. If you're talking about the power of God, now it is my turn. If you're talking about a breakthrough, now it is my turn. If you're talking about miracle, now it is my turn. Are you there? It's your turn. I said it's your turn. But our senior brother, Mary, didn't have a child. My senior sister, Mary, didn't have a child. And then the third one married, and, you know, she tried to have a child, and the child died at birth. And now I'm the number one, I'm the number four, I'm married. Now it is my turn. No, it's not your turn. No, it's not your turn. You will succeed in Jesus' name. But you see the confession of the people that do not understand that the power of God is there to break every bond. This day you are released. And the power of God is released in your life in Jesus' name. And it says, for that which I do, I allow not. It says, I don't know myself. That's what the people say. That's their confession. I don't know myself. Don't blame me. That's just me. Well, 
it will change. I said it will change. Then it says, for what I would, I do not. But what I hate, that I do. You know, there are some people that say, they're into this bad habit. And they say, trust me, I don't want to do it. It's just, you know, I don't know. It's my destiny. Sinning will not be my destiny. I said sinning will not be my destiny. Say it for yourself. Sinning will not be my destiny. He say, my father was a tobacco smoker. His father, my grandfather, was a pipe smoker. And I, I learned that great-grandfather was marijuana smoker. And now it is my turn. It's your turn? What are you going to smoke? I said, what are you going to smoke? Now it's their turn. It is not my turn. I said, it is not my turn. That bad habit of smoking is broken in Jesus' name. It says, and if then I do, verse 16, what I would not, I consent unto the law that is good. Now then, it is no more I that do it. You know what he's saying? I'm helpless, getting angry. It's not, it's not me. It's her family. Fighting is not me. It runs in our family. Wickedness is not me. It runs in our family because it's no more I that do it, but sin that dwells in me. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh. What's the next thing there? I say, what's the next thing there? Tell me out loud. It says, I know. It says, I know. This one doesn't have Christ. I know that in me, that he is inside my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. That means it's not saved. Christ is not there. That means the word of God is not there. That means the promise of God is not there. That means the power of the Holy Ghost that breaks up the yoke is not there. This is not you. I said this is not you. For to will is present with me. But how to perform that which is good I find not. If you find Christ, you'll find how to perform that which is good. For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. What a confession. Now, if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. This day, the Savior will replace that sin. The Lord Jesus will dwell in your heart in Jesus' name. And that bondage of sin will be broken away from your life in Jesus' name. Different kinds of bondage. Look. Luke chapter 13. In Luke chapter 13, I'm reading from verse 11. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity. A spirit of infirmity. Now, you need to understand when you read about all these things that these are different kinds of bondage. When you are born again, you have the spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ. When you are born again and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost, you have the spirit of inspiration, the spirit of illumination, not the spirit of infirmity. But this one had not met Christ, and Christ was just coming to her, and she had the spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bowed together. And could in no wise lift up herself. That was in the physical. But it happened to some people in the spiritual. That they could not lift up themselves. And they just stay there. They are bowed there. 
their bench there, the desires are there, their aspirations are there, the longing is there, but their bouts there. The yoke in that life is broken in Jesus' name. And it says, and when Jesus saw her, praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. The Lord has seen you where you are today. And this is the power for your hour. That time has come. I said that time has come. How long has it continued now in your life? 12 years, 18 years, 20 years. How long has it continued? It says when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said unto her, Woman, thou art loosed from thine infirmity. Final. I said final. Broken and never to come back again. Delivered and never to be bound again. From bondage unto breakthrough. And the power of Christ came upon her. And he laid his hands on her. And immediately she was made straight and glorified God. What are some people that have been happy to leave the woman like that? There's some people that would have been happy to see the man, the woman bound, bent, bowing, not able to look up. Not able to stand straight, not able to move forward, not able to fend for herself. There are some people that will prefer that that woman will stay like that. But Jesus is going to disappoint your enemies. Verse 14, and the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation. Ruler of the synagogue. Since the rulers of synagogue, they also want to rule the life of everybody. They will not rule your life. Jesus will come to your life and get you out of the desire, out of that permanent bondage and expectation of the Pharisees and of those rulers of the synagogue in Jesus' name, filled with, with indignation because that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day and said unto the people, there are six days in which men ought to work. In them, therefore, come and be healed, and not on the Sabbath day. What is the best day to get healed? The day of rest? The day of revival? The day of worship? When is the best day to have the power of God in your life? The day, holy day, Sabbath day, that is consecrated and committed unto serving the Lord. When is the best day to remember that our God is still powerful, our God is still mighty, our God is still breaking yoke on the day when you remember the Lord. And this fellow, the Israel of the synagogue, turned it upside down. And he said, on the Sabbath day, day of celebration, day of joy, day of happiness, and day of God, day of the Lord, and the day of celebration. Don't come and be healed at that time. And the Lord answered him and said, Thou hypocrite, your enemies are hypocrites. I said, your enemies are hypocrites. They desire good things for themselves. They don't want anything good for you. That's hypocrisy. They desire good things for their own family. They don't want good things for, uh, for your own family. That's hypocrisy. And they smile when they, when they see you. The, the ruler of the synagogue will say, everybody now, welcome, welcome. We're happy you're here. The ruler of the synagogue will say, now it's time, offering time. Come and put your offering there. And they get their money. But when good things happen to them, they're not happy. That's hypocrisy. And no hypocrite will have authority in your life in Jesus' name. The Lord said, and, and the Lord answered and said, Thou hypocrite, does not each one of you on the Sabbath day lose his ox and his ass from the stall and lead him away to watering? You lose your ox, can't I lose my own member? You lose your ox and your sheep and you lead them away freely. On the Sabbath day, can't I release the creatures of God and the sons and the daughters of Abraham? Verse 16, ought not this woman, being the daughter of Abraham, 
whom Satan has bound. Who bound this woman? Where does the spirit of infirmity come from? From Satan, whom Satan has bound. Lo, these 13 years be loose from this bond on the Sabbath day. You are loosed. You are delivered. You are set free. Different kinds of bondage. Number one, the bondage of sin. Number two, the bondage of sickness. Number three, the bondage of satanic affliction. Number four, the bondage of suffering. They just find that you are suffering, suffering, suffering. You don't know why. And the bondage of strange, recurrent happenings. Strange, recurrent happenings. Every time you get your salary, something bad will happen. Strange, recurrent happenings. Every time you want to take a step forward, something strange is happening. Strange, recurrent happening. Every time you want to make a positive move, a forward move, something strange is taking place. Strange, recurrent happenings. They're broken and destroyed this day in Jesus' name. Point number two, this is for you. I said, this is for you. I said, this is for you. Definite freedom from bondage. In John chapter 8. John chapter 8. Verse 32. And you shall know the truth. Say, I know the truth. Say that, I know the truth. Say that confidently. Praise the Lord. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Freedom from sin. Freedom from sickness. Freedom from suffering. Freedom from satanic affliction. The Lord will make you free completely today in Jesus' name. Verse 36, if the Son therefore shall make you free. Ye shall be free indeed. It has happened. I said it has happened. At the time of prayer, we're just going to confirm what has happened already. In Exodus chapter 6. Exodus chapter 6. I'm reading there from verse 6. Exodus 6, 6. Wherefore say unto the children of Israel, I am the Lord, and I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. Give me a good amen there. I will. I will. Pharaoh is going to say it's not possible, but God will do it. The magicians are going to say it's not possible, but God will do it. Your enemies are going to say it's not possible, but God is going to do it. You know, Pharaoh, he, he used cheap labor of those Israelites. And he built Ramses and built the tower and built this cheap labor. And somebody came and said, let my people go. And he said, how? How can that be? I lose their free service. I lose the cheap labor. I lose the slaves that don't have anyone, anybody to defend them. Have you noticed that? There's somebody there that, you know, you want to get married. And your uncle is saying, if you get married, and then you're going to have your own children, who is going to train my children? Because while you are not married, they are happy. Why you are not married, you're all the money you have, you're just working for them. And when now the yoke is going to be broken, they're all, you know, coming here and there and they say, no way, no way, no way. This cannot happen. If you get married, we will not be happy. If you get married, who is going to train our children? Then you're going to concentrate your money, your efforts, your love and everything upon your wife and upon your children. And they say, no way. But God has made the way. I said God has made the way. You know, sometimes that's why your enemies are not happy. They say all the things you're giving to them. 
and I'm surprised for a mother that has an only daughter. And this daughter is saying, Mama, something is happening. What's that? Mama, I want to get married. Ah, get married. How about me? When you get married now, all you know is your husband. And then me here, you're going to neglect me. I'm going to be miserable. Mama, not like that. If I get married, my, myself and my husband will take care of you. No way. No way. You're mine. You're my daughter. I don't want you to get married. I just love you for you to be miserable. That yoke is broken this day in Jesus' name. You know, all these people that, you know, they, all they want to do is that they just want to use you. That's what makes them happy. And your happiness, that's not their concern. Just labor, just work, and just do this and this, and just make us happy and contribute to our lives. And don't worry. Don't care. Don't pray. Don't get concerned for you getting settled in life. That yoke is broken in Jesus' name. And so Pharaoh was not happy, but I pity Pharaoh. Happy or not, God is going to do it. I pity Pharaoh. And if he tries to stand in the, in the way of these people of God, the Red Sea will be his final end. And that is what happens. You will get to the land of Canaan. You will get to the land of promise. But the one who is not happy for you making the progress, the one who is not happy for you getting to that land of pleasure, that land of promise, he is the one that will finish at the Red Sea. I will not finish at the Red Sea. I said I will not finish at the Red Sea. If something good is happening to your brother, you better rejoice with him. If something good is happening to your sister, you better rejoice with her. Because whether you like it or not, she's going to get to the land of Canaan. Whether you like it or not, he's going to get to the land of promise. And I pray that you follow through. All of us together will get to that land of promise in Jesus' name. The Lord has said, I will read you out of their bondage. And I will redeem you with a stretch out arm and with great judgment. Verse 7, and I will take you to me for a people. And I will be to you a God. And ye shall know that I am the Lord your God, which bringeth you out. From under the burdens of the Egyptians. It's repeated again because it is sure, it is certain you are coming out. And I will bring you in unto the land concerning which I did swear to give it to Abraham and to Isaac and to Jacob. And I will give it you for an heritage I I am the Lord. It will happen. This day, a breakthrough has come for you. Bondage is turned around. Bondage is turned upside down. And your bondage is destroyed in Jesus' name. In Ezekiel chapter 34. Ezekiel chapter 34. I'm reading from verse 23. Ezekiel 34, freedom, it has come. Breakthrough, it has come. The goodness of the Lord, it has come. It will be upon your life in Jesus' name. Your enemies will be put to shame. The strangers will get away from your life. Let's look at Ezekiel chapter 34, verse 23. And I will set up one shepherd over them. And he shall feed them, even my servant David. And he shall feed them, and he shall be their shepherd. And I, the Lord, will be their God. And my servant David, a prince among them. And 
I, the Lord, have spoken it. That means I have said it is done. The Lord said, He has spoken it for your good and it is done. He has spoken your release and it is done. He has granted your breakthrough and it is done. And then it says in verse 25, and I will make them a covenant, make with them a covenant of peace. And will cause the evil beast to cease, to stop out of the land. And they shall dwell safely in the wilderness and sleep in the woods. And I will make them and the places round about my hill, what? A blessing. And I will cause the shower to come down in a season. The next line is wonderful. The next line is, this is for me. I said, this is for me. I said, this is for me. Read it out, if it's for you. Read it again. Read it again. A new season has come. Rainy season has come. Showers are coming. The past is gone. The past is buried. From today, your rainy season has now come. Your breakthrough has now come. And there shall be. And there shall be. And there shall be. And there shall be. And there shall be showers of blessing. And the tree of the field shall yield a fruit. And the earth shall yield her increase. And they shall be safe in their land. And they shall know that I am the Lord. When I have broken the bands of their yoke. And delivered them out of the hand of those that served themselves of them. I told you already. The people that just want to make use of your service. They don't want your happiness. Only serve us. They don't want your joy, only serve us. They don't want your progress, only serve us. It says, I have delivered you already out of the hand of those that served themselves of you. You are delivered in Jesus' name. In Romans chapter 6, Romans chapter 6, this is giving us total freedom, freedom from sin. Freedom from sickness. Freedom from satanic affliction. Satanic bondage. Freedom from suffering. And freedom from strangers. Those strangers will not have authority over your life anymore in Jesus' name. It wasn't there when you were born, a stranger. It wasn't there when you were born again, that's a stranger. It wasn't there when God made a covenant with you and gave you all these promises as a stranger. I know they just come out of nowhere. And I want to tie the chain around you and knock off their hand from your life. Freedom from strangers. Accept it, you're free. Romans chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 16. It says, Know ye not? That to whom ye you yield yourselves servants to obey. A servant ye are to whom ye obey. That's what happened to the children of Israel. Moses came. And Moses declared unto them. Ye are coming out of the Egyptian bondage. And then when Pharaoh had that. He told the taskmasters. He said you know what. The surprise of my life. Somebody came in, he called his name Moses. He said, he's representing the people. And he said, let my people go. Taskmasters, what do you see? Oh, they say, those people, that's an idle dream. Those people, that's an impossible project. How can it be? What are we going to do? Go back and increase their bond. Go back and increase their torment. And they went back. And increased their torment. 
And the children of Israel said, Moses, leave us alone. Leave us in the hand of this man. See, since you came now and you gave him the project, the proposal, things are getting tougher. Let's serve him. We accept the bondage. We're going to serve the king of Egypt. Moses said no. I said no. This day of his power, the power for your hour, I said no in Jesus' name. You see, after the message, they appeared to me and they said, ah, your pastor is giving you so false confidence. And your pastor is saying, he is praying, and you're coming out, you will see. And then you're saying, okay, don't, don't worry, leave me alone, I will serve you. But don't increase my bondage, and I say, no. And I say, no. And you say, no. And we together, we say, no. Because if two of us shall agree as touch, agree with me. Let me agree with you. If two of us shall agree as touching anything that we ask on earth, it shall be done for us of our Father who is in heaven in Jesus' name. The, the Israelites said, Moses, leave us alone. Let us serve the king of, East, of, of Egypt. And Moses said, no. And I say in this power, day of power for your hour, I say no in Jesus' name. Because to whom ye yield yourselves to obey, his servants here, to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death, of obedience unto righteousness. But God be thanked that she was servants of sin, but she have obeyed from the heart the form of doctrine which was delivered unto you. And being then made free from sin. Thank God you are free. I say thank God you are free. Be made free from sin. You became the servants of righteousness. Isaiah chapter 52. You have something to do now. Very simple. It's a simple thing you are supposed to do. But you'll do it. Isaiah chapter 52 verse 1. Awake. Don't sleep again. Awake. Put on your strength, O Zion. Put on thy beautiful garments, O Jerusalem. The holy city. You are holy from this day. I said you are holy from this day. Your guilt is gone. Your condemnation is gone. For henceforth, there shall no more come unto thee the uncircumcised and to the unclean. Your life is a territory they cannot trample upon anymore in Jesus' name. Shake thyself from the dust. Arise and sit down, O Jerusalem. Loose thyself from the binds of thy neck, O captive daughter of Zion. I am free. I am free. You are free in Jesus' name. You shake yourself from that dust and you forget about it and move on. In verse 3, for thus says the Lord, you have sold yourselves for naught. You have served the strangers for nothing. You sold yourself because of fear unto Pharaoh, unto Nebuchadnezzar for nothing. Ye shall be redeemed without money. You be redeemed with the blood of Jesus Christ. Now dynamic faith for breakthrough. Dynamic faith for breakthrough. In Ephesians chapter 6 verse 16. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 16. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 16. Above all. Taking the shield of faith, wherewith he shall be able to quench, how many darts? All the furry darts of the wicked. God bless you, you have overcome already. In Romans chapter 4, Romans chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 17. 
as it is written, your victory is written already. Your dominion is written already. Your progress is written already. And what is written is going to be fulfilled. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. Before him whom he believed, even God who called those things would be not as though they were. He's the one that quickness the dead. And there's the one that caused those things which be not as though they were. Who against hope believed in hope. That he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken. So shall thy seed be. And be not weak in faith. That's all you need. Not be weak in faith. Not be weak in faith. I am not weak in faith. But he was he considered not his own body, now dead, when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. But he was, he was, he was, he was strong in faith giving glory to God and being fully persuaded. There are some, you, you know the problem when somebody is partially uh, persuaded. Are you going to do this, my brother? I'm thinking about it. I'm hoping I will do it. Are you not persuaded? Well, partially, I'm partially persuaded. This is your sickness standing for a long time. And you spend all your income on hospitals. Are you going to be healed? I'm thinking so. I'm hoping so. I feel maybe. Are you not persuaded? Well, I'm partially persuaded. That's the problem. Are you partially persuaded? How persuaded are you? I said how persuaded are you? These Egyptians are to see today. You will see them no more in Jesus' name. How persuaded are you? This sickness reaching in your life, reaching in your family. This sickness is going in Jesus' name. How persuaded are you? Fully persuaded. All these strangers, every time you want to get up and move on, they show up. They have not visited you for how many years now? And just like you are planning, and then you are going for the interview. As you are going for the interview, here comes the man. You have not seen him for the past five years. How, how did he know I'm going for interview today? They have come again and just knocked at the door and said, How are you? I just came to see you, to know whether you are still living and face me I face you. Or whether you have moved to another place, so you are still here. Okay, you'll be here. Another time, I'm going to call maybe 10 years again. I'll meet you here again. You'll say, look at this. Every time I'm taking a forward step, they always come. You will not see them again. I said you will not see them again. They are gone away from your life in Jesus' name. How persuaded are you? Tell me out loud. Look at the first child that you are to have. At the time the child was to be born, they said the child is dead, still bad. And then, after you cleaned up and you overcame the sorrow, another pregnancy, and then you delivered that child again. And then the third one, that child again. And you always see somebody. Just that month, just that week, you are to deliver. And then the fourth pregnancy is there now. And then you see the Lord before you see her. And you see the promise before you see her. And you see me, look up here, look up and look at me here. You see me before you see her. Victory has come. I said victory has come. A living miracle child has come in Jesus' name. And then after seeing the Lord, 
after seeing the promise, after seeing me, because I carry the promise of the Lord, I'm your servant, I carry to say, see, your miracle child has come. I'm your servant, I'm the servant of the church, and I say, see, it has come. Everybody say, it has come. And after that, then you dream and you see, lo and behold, you see her. You say, why? What's happening? I thought I'll see my pastor in my dream. Look at the woman I'm seeing. It doesn't matter anymore. I said it doesn't matter anymore. How persuaded are you? I am fully persuaded it is done in Jesus' name. If they come, if they come after this time, look at them and tell them, this time you came too late. This time you came too late. Everybody say you came too late. I got it already. Miracle child, miracle child, miracle child, miracle supply. I got it already in Jesus' name. I'm being fully persuaded that he that had promised, he was able, what he had promised, he was able also to perform. Able also to perform. Able also to perform. It is done in Jesus' name. Mark chapter 9 verse 23 Mark chapter 9 verse 23 Jesus said unto him if thou canst believe all things are possible how many things are possible all things victory all things dominion all things reigning in life all things a new job all things a new Miracle child, all things, a new family, all things, joy, happiness, fulfillment, a new thing happening to you. All things are possible to him that believeth. You believe it will be done. Mark chapter 11, verse 22. And Jesus answering says unto them, Have faith in God, for verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass. What's the next thing? Tell me out loud. Say that again. He shall have, he shall have, he shall have, whatsoever he says. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, what things soever ye desire, forget the pharaohs, whatsoever things ye desire, forget Nebuchadnezzar, whatsoever things ye desire, forget the ruler of the synagogue, whatsoever things ye desire, it's your desire that matters today. It's your desire that matters today. Whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. 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 Are you ready to have? Are you ready to possess? Are you ready for your breakthrough? Why don't you stand up ready for your breakthrough? Ready for your breakthrough. Ready for your breakthrough. Ready to, for your breakthrough. Nothing holding you back anymore. Nothing holding you back anymore. Whatsoever you desire, show your desire to the Lord. Open your mouth and tell the Lord, here is my desire. The desire to be victorious. Victory over sin. Victory over sickness. Victory over satanic affliction. Victory over suffering. Victory over the strangers. That's my desire. That's my desire. Open your mouth and tell the Lord that desire, having dominion, having authority, knowing not a Pharaoh, not a Nebuchadnezzar, not an evil personality, not a strange personality can hinder this desire. 
The key is in your hand. The key for the breakthrough. Open the door and open that door by faith. Open that door by faith. Whatsoever you desire. Every good thing you want. You are the one that has the final say. Don't surrender your heart, your life, your soul, your body, your family, your career into the hands of an enemy, to the hands of a stranger. Whatsoever you desire. Don't make those strong confessions anymore. I cannot. Yes, you can. I cannot overcome. Yes, you can. I cannot have dominion. Yes, you can. I cannot be victorious. Yes, you can. I cannot get healed. Yes, you can. I cannot have the blessing of God. Yes, you can. I cannot claim my right. Yes, you can. Victory over sin. Victory over that chronic disease. Victory over satanic affliction, satanic attack. They won't leave me alone. Yes, they leave you alone. Yes, they leave you alone. Yes, they have left you alone. Your destiny is in your hand, not in the hand of a stranger. Your destiny is in your hand, not in the hand of wicked people, not in the hand of the ruler of the synagogue. Your destiny is the hand of the Lord and has given you the key. Open the door and have your breakthrough. In Jesus' name we pray. Did you desire victory? Did you desire dominion? Did you say it in your prayer? Did you ask the Lord what to give you? Did you ask for full salvation with total, complete, 365 days of victory over sin? Are you victorious over sin now? Victorious over Satan now. Victorious over sickness now. Victorious over suffering now. How about the strangers? I said how about the strangers. Will the strangers be the director of your life? Will the strangers be the controller of your life? Will the strangers be the final voice in your life? Do you have victory over the strangers? Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this day, the day of your power. We thank you for this hour. It's an hour of your power. And Lord, I agree with every one of my brother, every one of my sister, every one of our children over there. Victory has come in Jesus' name. What we agree on at this hour of your power. No devil can reverse it. No enemy can reverse it. No stranger can reverse it. Lord, it is done in Jesus' name. All the sin that your people have confessed and forsaken, you promise forgiveness, forgive them in Jesus' name. All the blindness, dumbness, deafness, I cancel that in Jesus' name. That recurrent disease, taking out your finance every time, I remove that right now. Be healed in Jesus' name. Lord, all the defeat in the life of any child of God here, 
either in his personal life, in his family life, in his career, in his business, professional life, all that defeat, I cancel that in Jesus' name. Every good desire of your heart, receive it right now. Every good aspiration in your life, receive it right now. All the longings you have and the hope, I'll get this, I'll do this. Rise up, move ahead, and go and succeed in Jesus' name. I silence all those strangers in your life. All those strangers in your dream. All those strangers in your community. All those strangers bringing all those defeats, all those thoughts of defeat. I cancel the authority in your life in Jesus' name. From this day, you experience that power. You are saved. You are healed. You are delivered. You are set free. The power of the Lord is upon your life right now. No more bondage. No more captivity. No more negative condition. No more enemy overpowering you. You have got your breakthrough. You have got your breakthrough. You have got the breakthrough. Pregnant woman, your child will live. Father, your children will be happy, will make you happy. Mothers, your children will make you happy. Miracle upon your life. Miracle in your family. Miracle in your place of work. Miracle around you. Next time when you come, testimony in your mouth. Testimony in your mouth. Testimony in your mouth. It is confirmed in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you because we know it is done. Lord, we thank you because we know it is done. Lord, we know it is done in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the answer because we know you have answered in Jesus' name. We pray. A victorious amen. An amen of dominion. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We have the victory. We have the victory. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You has to bow when I call in the name of Jesus. Tell me who has the power to oppose in the name of mighty Jesus. I have the victory. I have a victory. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, you have the victory, you have the victory.